Um, hi. We're going to start here in a second. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I don't know if everyone's been to the tech lunch before to Algolia at all, but for those of you who don't know what Algolia does, um, we do software for search and discovery. Basically, we, we build tools and APIs for developers to build search into their websites and applications. So for example, when you go on Product Hunt and you search for something, that's Agolia powering it. Uh, so that's what we do, and today we're here to talk about what it's like to design for developers. Um, also, we're hiring. We're hiring designers and developers, so um, just a shameless plug. And now we can uh, make an introduction. My name is Aurora. I'm going to be moderating the panel. and. We have here Lucia, Vanessa, and Roma, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Lucia. I joined Algolia exactly three months ago as a product designer, and so designing for developers is a new experience for me. Before that, I was designing products for recruiters or marketers, so this is a new field, but learning. Hi, uh, my name is Vanessa Cahill. I'm with Datadog. I only joined Datadog about two months ago, but before that I worked at New Relic for three and a half years. And so those are tools that help developers monitor their own code. Um, Datadog is also hiring for all positions, if anybody is interested. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Romain Didry. I'm a designer at Screen.io. I joined the company two years and most uh, half ago. I was the first uh, in-house uh, the designer. Uh, Screen.io is a web application security. So b basically, we monitor your in-app security. We offer you a simple way to protect uh, against uh, common threats. And also, uh, we simplify how you uh, protect from um, business cases, your business cases. And uh, our mission is to democratize security for developers and also for startups and simplify how our bigger companies and uh, enterprises are doing uh, security. Uh, great. Well, thank you so much. Um, let's start with uh, why you decided to um, start designing for, for devs. Well, uh, it was not a pure intent. Like, my life dream is to design for developers. I liked Algolia's mission, and part of the product team uh, missions is to design for developers. I'm currently within the e-commerce squad, where we design not only for developers, uh, so the extensions that we provide is also for marketers, e-commerce managers, so there is a slight difference uh, what my target audience is. Um, much the same. I didn't. Um, I was kind of thrown into the industry by luck, uh, but I returned to the industry because it's a really fun thing to do. Um, the challenges are really specific. The data visualizations can get really like cool and abstract. And usually, the people you're working with are, I don't know, not like I'm sure not the peak of the most talented people in the world, but they're all very talented and very passionate about what they do. So it's a really fun place to work. Yes, definitely uh, very talented people, very passionate. Uh, for my part, uh, I joined mm, the main reason wh wh why I joined uh, Screen.io is that uh, thanks to the team and the culture, I work with very talented people, very, very smart people, and uh, it's uh, always enjoyable. And uh, my background wasn't really into the um, coding field, but uh, I have a CTO brother. And uh, during my studies, I did some basic PHP programming and uh, databases, languages. So, so yeah, it wasn't uh, really an unknown field for me. And um, as I arrived as uh, the first uh, designer, the challenges are everywhere. You have to be to do everything, and it's uh, very fun. Great. So, speaking of, you were mentioning that you are fa you were familiar with programming, but you're not a programmer yourself. Um, the next question is like, please don't throw your sandwiches at me. <laughs> Shoot designers code, like. Did but really, the question is like, do you have any experience in coding? 
I started with creating like simple websites, so it's only HTML and CSS, so not really coding. And uh, other than that, I don't have coding experience, but I like to say that I understand code, so I would be able to make some adjustment, but it's not like I'm totally oblivious to it, but I don't do it myself. And I think this is a this is the sweet spot between understanding what's going on and not having too much knowledge that might prevent me from creating or suggesting some some designs. Yeah, um, also, my coding experience is pretty much limited to HTML and CSS. And the most advanced thing I've done is like WordPress PHP, so um, at that level. Many many of our designers at Datadog do code, and they actually um, like you know push code into the system. Um, but just as many don't, so I don't think it's a requirement. I can't disagree. Uh, but yeah, for my part, uh, like I said, uh, I had the small uh, knowledge of uh, of programming. Uh, it's totally fine if you don't know how to code. Uh, like I said, uh, you, uh, you don't have to be a uh, Kylian Mbappé or LeBron James to coach those uh, those guys. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So before we move forward, I wanted to ask, uh, how many of you are designers? Could please raise, raise your hands. Okay, there's not a lot of designers. And how many of you are developers? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> 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 okay, we're gonna be nice. I promise. Um, okay, so. What are the things that are uh, different about designing for developers as opposed to end consumers? Well, for me, developers are in a way our end consumers, but um, one thing that uh, I always keep in mind is that uh, developers are creators or builders themselves, so they rarely uh, build stuff for themselves. They have their own customer base or users that they are knowledgeable about. And a second point is that uh, while working with developers, I found out that there is always like a huge responsibility with developers when I am deploying something, when I am pushing the code finally to the production or whatever. And for me as a designer, I always keep this in mind uh, so that in my designs I, I like to make things easier for them to try to avoid these human errors or mistakes that could occur with such a huge responsibility. So as a designer for developers, I like to make my designs as simpler as and clear enough for them. Yeah, um, <coughs> they're definitely an interesting group to design for. I find, especially in the monitoring space, that um, developers can be like a little bit more critical of um, what you're designing and putting out there because oftentimes they could build it themselves, given enough time and uh, opportunity. So um, there's like not that black box, box effect where in under other industries, people who you're designing for might not be as technical and so they don't necessarily understand the behind the scenes of it all. So they're a little bit more for forgiving sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to mismatch uh, between your in-house developers and your end users. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a point. Uh, second point, I think that you have to um, to make uh, to to build trust and transparency with your users. Uh, for doing that, you have to uh, avoid all marketing jargon. Uh, so uh, try to call the cat a cat. It's uh, simple to say, but hard to uh, how to do. Uh, you have to avoid all black box. You have to explain what's happening under the hood and um, and reassure uh, your users that you are not uh, going to uh, uh, to add some code complexity or or latency or whatever. And um, and yeah, what is different also, I think, it's that um, you have, as a designer, you have a, um, a smaller audience, but uh, the impact is very huge, and the feedback loop uh, also is a bit shorter uh, compared to a mass market product. 
Cool. And so those are the some of the differences and what are <laughs> some more some of the similarities if you want to start now, yeah, Vanessa. Yeah. I can start. Um the process is always the same. You have to keep on, um, you know, still doing your design due diligence. So you can't just um, only interview internal people because they have the same domain knowledge. You still have to go after your target audience out in the world and actually interview them and test your designs. So you can't just um, get really lazy because people who you sit next to happen to also be able to hypothetically test what you're building. Indeed. Um you still have to go outside of the building to uh, to meet your user, understand who they are, understand uh, how they work, uh, what are the pain points, etc. Uh, developers are users uh, first, so yeah, you also have to, as a designer, bring design thinking, bring design process into the the company where you are, and uh, yeah, there is much more similarities than uh, differences. I totally agree that there are much more similarities than differences and also going out and even though we are working with developers, they are not necessarily the end users, which is a common mistake. Uh, so yeah, uh, I agree with you, more similarities. So uh, at the end of the, this conversation, there is a Q&A, so you also be able to ask questions and uh, share your thoughts. Um, so. Um, how did you get onboarded? I know that it was like you started uh, something like four years ago, uh, but you, Lucia, you started very recently, so this might be good for you to start. Like, how was your onboarding? What are the things you did you did to make sure you were ready to understand the product and and the users? Uh, so for me, definitely, it's uh, asking a lot of questions um, to get the technical background needed for me to be able to actually propose some designs or solutions. I needed to get the grasp of what the hell is Algolia doing, what are these extensions that we are building, what are the differences, because you as a good designer, you cannot really fake it. Uh, so you need to understand the basics the tech background to be able to contribute to the discussion. Even though personally, uh, it's hard to ask so many questions because you feel stupid or whatever, but you need to overcome these, uh, discuss with your colleagues, developers, um, to, to explain things to you. Uh, and then as a designer, you are also able to, to provide better solutions. So asking questions, and then for me, when I joined the team, uh, it's more like suggesting smaller improvements rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. Before I joined, uh, the squad didn't have a product designer, so I was the first one that they got. So my intent wasn't to reinvent everything, like, look, uh, I'm the designer and this is how it will look like, this is how it will work. So small improvements rather than big changes. I definitely agree with um, all those things. <laughs> um, about upon asking, sta uh, asking questions, um, even now still, it, like you just have to be really bold about um, interacting with people on your team. So if they're like you know two miles that way, but you're here, you have to say, let's stop the conversation and bring it back here and let's start at ground zero again. Where and explain it to me as though I were 10. <laughs> Um, also, in my onboarding, I spent a lot of time drawing diagrams. So um, some things were not so like tangible to me, like APIs, for instance. I had to spend some time turning those into like real objects so I could understand the relationship between, uh, you know, this calling this thing and getting a response back. So you know, it'd be object one calling object two, but I would draw it out so that I could have an actual, like, physical understanding of what's not physical. Yeah, you have to. Embrace ambiguity when you arrive in such a, a, a field. Uh, for my part, it was a, a bit different uh, since I arrived at the first designer and uh, at a very early stage uh, at this time. So everything was to be done. Uh, I didn't have much time to uh, really uh, understand making maps or, or whatever. So uh, what I did is just listen a lot, observe a lot, ask questions, obviously, uh, attend to uh, tech meetups, uh, and um, subscribe to podcasts. Uh, I suggest you to uh, 
to take a look at what Heavybit is doing. Heavybit is a, an online community for startups uh, around dev tool products, and they are doing a lot of very great uh, content. And um, yeah, newsletters, dev newsletters, uh, yeah. Yeah, I particularly enjoy that all of you agree that uh, that asking questions is basic, and like it sounds really obvious, but it's often come, especially when you don't have any background uh, as a programmer, when you don't understand anything, to kind of uh, like be embarrassed to ask certain questions. So I think it's really nice to remember that that's like the the, the way to get started. Um, and so once uh, the onboarding was done, or kind of you. You know, you were doing the the objects things, wi which I'm definitely gonna do. What were your first impressions, um, like pr uh, compared to your previous experiences? Yeah, definitely. My first impression of um, any role still in this field is like it's a fire hose of information always. So even now, when I'm starting a new project, you know, there's like product managers and developers all telling me things, and they're like, "Oh, we want these ten features." I'm like, "Wait, wait, why, why?" So it's always just a fire hose of um, new information. Um, so, like, still one of my habits that I got into is just you know collecting my notes always and keeping like a running tally of like new things I'm learning and how they've affected the original spec. So it's just like so much to know <laughs> all the time. Yes, I agree. So whenever a new project starts, it, it feels just so overwhelming at first. So I try to make sense uh, for myself and then yeah, we, we try to make sense for the end user as well. Uh, so understanding, again, asking a lot of questions. <coughs> so um, yeah, this is what, and I love your diagram process thingy. I, I might implement that as well. I would want to go back to it because for me, I don't do diagrams yet, but I try to visualize things in my head to understand concepts. And I also tend to ask, what are the users doing currently? What What is the benefit for the end user currently? Explain to me like what the user would do. So uh, I make these kind of connections to, to make sense what I am building or designing. Not uh, a lot to, to add. Uh, first feeling I had it was, uh, oh my god, I'm an imposter. Uh, I'm not in my at, at my place. But uh, again, since I arrived uh, at a very early stage, it was a bit different for me. So um, yeah, but I totally agree with what you said. Yeah, for for me, it was uh, also the imposter. He's like, what am I doing here? Can I just run away? <laughs> but um, it gets better. Um, OK. So um, talking about feeling comfortable, uh, I'm sure like all of us now feel a little bit more comfortable, maybe not fully, but um, for example, you, Vanessa, how long did it take you to feel comfortable? Um, it was about six months before I could even properly, at the time, tell you what New Relic did, like in a little elevator pitch. Now I feel um, more comfortable, but still all the time because technology is moving so fast and um, you know, all the new things, like the things that Datadog are doing, you know, New Relic did a while ago, but everything's new since then, so we can do a lot more with um, the data we're collecting. So still, it's like a completely new learning process. Um, and so I'm still doing all of those things that I was doing then, um, but at least now I can do the elevator pitch. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not uh, comfortable, but uh, it takes one year and a half, I would say. Uh, I'm not comfortable now because um, we change a bit how uh, on uh, who we focused our attention. At the beginning, we focused only on developers, programmers, and since for a few months, we are focusing more of head of security, security owner. So it's a totally different persona compared to a programmer. And uh, yeah, there is a huge d diversity of, of uh, what we call developer. Uh, there is CISO, uh, CTO, security owner, developer, programmer. So each one of them has a very different persona, needs, etc. So so yeah, I'm learning every day, and uh, still not comfortable, but uh, yes. It's exactly the same for me, so I'm still at the beginning, uh, learning, and it's a learning curve, I guess. Uh, so still not comfortable, but working on it <laughs> each day. 
At least we are like a little bit comfortable to get in front of a lot of developers and <laughs> <laughs> tell them how we feel about designing for developers. Um, okay, so um, in this, you'll probably be able to help us during the Q&A, uh, but how do you think uh, developers or the developers you work with perceive design? Uh, so before I joined Algolia, I met developers who saw design like only the end part of the process. Like, okay, we have built this and now give it to you, make it nicer uh, before we even consider doing the design, but otherwise we publish it uh, as we have it. Uh, but in Algolia, I'm happy to work with developers who value uh, design, uh, include us uh, right in the beginning of the of the process um, so uh, yeah this is this is how developers might perceive design and also uh, the role of, of designers also there is this stereotype like of a developer in a hoodie somewhere underground uh, doing all the matrix UI stuff or whatever this is uh, not true completely <laughs> Uh, so also recently I, I've discovered on Instagram this new wave of very stylish developers who like to take screenshots of their beautifully designed workplaces. So I've been lucky enough to, to work with developers who value design and beauty of things uh, that are working well. So Yeah, I've been also very lucky. Um, but most of the times that I come into a, a team and they have not had a designer or worked with the designer ever, they're always very, very grateful to have somebody to kind of take off that load from them so they don't have to think about, you know, where the button goes or what is this doing or the copy. Um, they, they have us to edit down for them. Um, I find sometimes within an organization, depending on where they're at, there might be some pushback from above who think that design is kind of a bottleneck, but from the developers themselves, um, everyone I've worked with has been really happy to have me on the team and uh, welcoming me into their process. Totally agreed. Um, they enjoy a lot uh, when they are using a nicely done uh, product, nicely designed product, and I can totally understand them because there is uh, still a bunch of dev tools and uh, op uh, open source tools that are quaply, quaply designed, yeah? And uh, so, yeah, I can totally understand them. Uh, how they perceive good design, I think that it's the same for everyone. Uh, when uh, a product is nicely designed, the it's, it's um, simple, uh, it's uh, almost uh, invisible, uh, smart and uh, enjoyable to, to, to use. Yeah, but, and the developers also love to uh, learn how to make things uh, more beautiful, more uh, usable, etc. Uh, your in-house developers, yeah. yeah and I, uh, you were mentioning earlier about the stereotype of a developer, uh, and it usually it goes along with the stereotype of a designer who is like also working in a corner, like doing pretty things, and like don't bother me until I'm done with my work of art, and then like you share it, and then they're like, what is this? Um, so I'm glad that we're like getting outside of our stereotypes. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, I'm s uh, we have another question afterwards, but um, this is not working. Uh, it's not working there. Um, okay, I remember the question. <laughs> <laughs> if you give me one second. Um, yes, so the last question was uh, like what's just try to think of something today that is obvious to you, but not might not be obvious for someone else. You can we can start with Lucia. For me, it's the power of details. Maybe uh, so the work that I produce uh, might not be revolutionary in terms of design, but oftentimes some small adjustment to typography, to alignment, to just make a design simpler makes a huge impact in the end uh, so this is something I, I had to actually learn that this is the the real value of a, of a designer not trying to reinvent things completely but uh, provide these adjustments which make impact in the end yeah that's a good thought 
Um, for me, it's um, back to the just asking questions all the time. I like when I first started in this field, I was you know hesitant because I wanted to look really smart with my coworkers. Don't do that; they will see right through you. So now, anytime again, I go into a new meeting and I don't know, um, the first thing I do is ask everybody a billion questions until they're so tired of me, probably. But they know at that time, like this is just the experience with Vanessa. She will ask us questions, but she will have some sort of understanding of what we're doing. So. <laughs> Um, I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> so something that's obvious to you right now that yeah. might not be obvious for someone starting. True, true, true. Uh, I would say, I would say, li li like you, Lucia said before, uh, forget totally about the programmer stereotype. But since there is much more developers, yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, other things, uh, developers love to be involved into the product uh, process. And uh, they love to make uh, things with uh, the product team. Yeah, not a lot to say about that. OK, um, so I skipped a question. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly go back to it because uh, so that we can take notes. Uh, where do you get inspiration uh, from? Well, it's a tough one. Everywhere I get, uh, everybody gets inspiration everywhere. So when I'm specifically looking for some UI patterns or UX patterns, there are websites for this, like uh, Dribble, UX library, whatever. But uh, as a designer, I, I try to read a lot of books, not necessarily on design. So whatever book can spark this inspiration, which I might later uh, implement into a design or product idea. Um, as a designer, I don't think that it's only about making the user experience better or to uh, visualize things, but it's also to contribute product-wise with ideas. And this is where I get inspiration from usually. And with talking with developers or other colleagues uh, is the best kind of inspiration for me. Yeah, I totally agree with all those things. Um, most of us, especially at Datadog, um, because the design team is not as technical as the development team around us, most of the good ideas come from outside the design team. So we always have to be really open and perceptive to like new things coming in. Um, personally, I find a lot of inspiration just from um, things out in the world. So data, vi data visualizations that are not necessarily about like monitoring your stuff more than um, just seeing what people are doing with data out there. So like, um, you know, mapping of like voter registration fields and those cool tree maps that I'm waiting to use one day, but I haven't found a reason. I think subway map design is like really, really fascinating. So um, kind of just things out in the world that are, that are nothing related to what I do. I think um, just looking for inspiration in um, how people take big data and make it simple is a good thing to do. Yeah, definitely. You can find patterns everywhere, not especially on dev products. Uh, you, but I will focus more of the product. I, I'm look, uh, I'm looking uh, uh, in terms of dev tool, how they onboard users, etc. Uh, I think about Sentry, uh, the most beautifully designed uh, dev tool product, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I'm looking also at Intercom uh, segments. Stripe, and uh, yeah, a bunch of uh, other tools that, uh, yeah. yeah. Sentry is the best. Um, okay, so <laughs> just to, but Algolia is better, even though we do <laughs> completely different things. Um, okay, so we did that one already, and now, like, if we had to leave when one or two thoughts each, which one would that be? Uh, there is a lot of developers here, so embrace designers in your team, include them, <laughs> answer their questions. <laughs> so this is my closing remarks. And again, we are hiring product designers <laughs> at Algolia. That's a good remark. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I also agree. Um, as a designer, just embrace being uncomfortable and asking questions. Get comfortable with um, not knowing anything and just trying to expand your knowledge. And also, Datadog is hiring for product designers <laughs> and other engineers. <laughs> we are also hiring. <laughs> and uh, what I could say, uh, embrace ambiguity. Uh, uh, include all your in-house developer into the, the design thinking process. Uh, learn them how to do, how to do UX. Uh, it's a bit hard 
to, it's a bit simple to say, but uh, hard to to do in a day to day. And uh, yeah, dev dev tool products product need designers, and designers also need need dev tool products. Uh, also, I, I had another closing remarks. Uh, sometimes it's it's not sexy to. Uh, uh, work into a dev tool company when I explain my job to uh, other designers but uh, it's really is uh, uh, and uh, it's r really enjoyable to work with passionate people and um, yeah yeah I, I, I find it easier to to relate to the problems that I'm solving like designing for dev tools definitely than some of the other like products that maybe solve like uh, they're a commodity or they're stuff like a really small like day-to-day -day um, problem and it's definitely also a challenge, which sometimes it's hard to find um, in the design industry. And in, in, in a company you join, sometimes you're you're doing what you did, like you've done like ten times already, and this is constantly a like um, excruciating challenge. So it's great. Um, so thank you so much, uh, the three of you, for all the answers. Now it's the turn of everybody else. If you have questions or remarks, um, feel free. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Hello. <laughs> I have one question. Uh, how do you measure good design? How can you tell after shipping a new design uh, kit or something, how do you tell, okay, it works or it doesn't work? Do you have tools or frameworks to share? Um, <coughs> I would say feedbacks. Like I said uh, at the beginning, the feedback loop is very, very short. So just asking, uh, doing some user research. It's not user research, it's uh, user testing, uh, doing interviews. Uh, you, you learn a lot with uh, a small number of uh, interviews you can do. Uh, after that, how do you measure it's a good design? How to 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 have KPIs on that? Uh, but yeah, I would say feedbacks, feedbacks, interviews. Um, yeah, that's my answer. Yeah, and I, I can add something. Um, and it's also in the in the product development environment. In the end, that the idea is not to measure the good design itself; it's to measure the success of the feature of, of the product. So it's that's why we're constantly we have we each designer have a list of questions to ask when you kick off. Our projects and one of them is like how are we going to measure success because oftentimes especially in early stages you you move forward without really knowing how you're going to measure it so the idea is to succeed as a product more than to succeed as a with the design itself yeah we've also um, I've worked at small companies and big companies um, and we've had various ways of trying to measure success so a lot of it's been trying to um, at a smaller company like I was very very close with the support team and so watching the support tickets on a certain subject either go higher or go lower based on um, things we were shipping out. That was a good way we were starting to do that. Um, we've gotten more into um, instrumenting all of our things internally. So at Datadog, we have an internal analytics team and the design team is working, um, we're trying to work more closely with them on um, kind of getting these, these user attributes and usage data based on our new products. One thing we're um, doing now is trying to kind of profile who's using what features and use that data to kind of group them more meaningfully. And so um, along with that usage data, we can also track like, is that button hiding? Like does nobody know how to create this new thing or, do, or are they actually not doing it? And so that, that kind of data paired with um, user testing to actually watch them do things. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? Hello. Uh, so you talked about it already, but could you go into more details about how and when you involve uh, developers in your creation or, or research uh, process? I would, I, I would like to share a recent experience. Uh, well, I joined Algolia three months ago, but uh, I got involved as a designer to design a feature that uh, was already somewhat planned. And for this, because it wasn't clear to me enough, and for this, I ran a so-called design studio workshop where I gathered the product manager, two developers, and myself as a product designer. And through some activities and exercises, 
we went through the, the threats, the, the risks within the project, uh, the opportunities, and after two or three hours where developers were involved, the project manager was involved, we were able to come to a solution. So this was at a really early stage of a, of a project. The team got aligned on everything and after the meeting it was clear what are our roles, what is the purpose of why we are building this and uh, yeah, so as early as possible. And it was really important to have everybody on the meeting have their say. Uh, so yeah, well me as a designer and developer, so everything was included in fact. This was super important. Yeah, it's hard to explain um, how it works into your brain as a designer. Um, but yeah, you, ha you have to try. It's difficult, but you, ha you have to try why you are thinking uh, this, uh, this feature is better layout like this or yeah, it's uh, really un you answered better than me uh, the question. <laughs> Yeah, I agree um, with Lucia. Um, as early as possible, I've had the best results that way. Um, everyone feels like they're on the same page, so that you're all like working towards the same goal, and so that your developers trust you a little bit more to make some um, decisions on behalf of the user, and then you know that you're all sharing the same understanding going in also, so they can have their say at the beginning too, and you can all collect your ideas. And again, especially with what at, at Datadog, because I'm not technical or as technical as most people, that's where a lot of the good ideas come out and we can um, kind of start mapping them into, you know, this one's probably an MVP idea, this one maybe will be like version two because it's a little more advanced. Um, and then like, yeah, just always go into the mindset there are, there are no bad ideas because there aren't. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask, as, as designers in developer tools company, what is the scope of what you do? So are you involved in things like CLI tools, uh, APIs, documentation and so on? All that. Yeah, as far um, for us, um, we're still kind of like uh, at the point where, and I'm, I'm on the biggest design team here, just to clarify, and we are still at the point where we are so few that we are involved in pretty much everything. So um, I've got a product team I work specifically with, but anytime somebody needs help, if they have um, like questions about making an API experience better, or if they need an icon, or if they need um, help with like editing documentation, they can still come to the design team for those things. We also do t-shirt designs still. <laughs> so we're kind of um, at the size where we're still kind of hands in all the pots. Yeah, I really think that designers should be involved everywhere. Uh, for my part, it's uh, like I said, different. Uh, since I'm the first designer uh, still, uh, I need to do a bunch of other things like uh, uh, branding, marketing design, so I don't have the time uh, now to focus on uh, everything like documentation. But uh, even if we are currently uh, changing uh, our documentation, and uh, I encourage you to, to take a look at uh, what Algolia did on uh, their documentation. It's a really great work. But uh, yeah, designers should be involved everywhere, even in the API design. And uh, But it's something much more difficult than uh, just uh, designing uh, an interface. Hello. Um, my question is regarding where um, we could find some principles for good UX and UI for uh, developers. So where would the, the, I would say, the major principle uh, be lying on the internet? Um, uh, so, for example, there is a website that is called The Loss of UX, and you can find a lot of resources um, there. And my favorite is uh, uh, Nielsen Group. It's a, it's a blog with tons of documentation on how to, how to do b better interaction, better like human and computer interaction. Uh, and it's at the reach uh, for everyone else. I don't know if you were looking for something that specific. Um, that okay. Something like this is okay. It's just um, I'm not very familiar with the concept, with all the concepts. So I try and look for, especially for the team. Uh, yeah. So searching in in, in blocks like that uh, would definitely help. I don't know if you have. I don't have anything like a specific link I could lend you to or send you to. Uh, or I guess maybe Smashing Mag usually does some nice case studies. 
I find um, mostly it's on a like kind of a per widget thing that I'll go out into the internet world and be like, how are people doing tables? What are good practices for tables? So usually I'm finding um, like good principles per kind of thing that way rather than like as a whole going out and finding just articles on UX. But there are definitely um, some great resources out there. Uh, thanks. Then there was another question in the back. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for being here. I have a question regarding uh, collaboration between designers and engineers on a specific project. I think like you touched, you all touched a bit on this topic, and so I'm curious to hear what you think is general is the reason why this collaboration goes right or wrong, and maybe if you have an advice to make a fruitful collaboration between engineers and designers. Yeah, it's an, uh, quite another subject, but uh, I think that you have to involve engineers uh, as early as possible. We all said that. Uh, show what you've done. Uh, I don't remember if you said it, but uh, even if you don't have a perfect interface, uh, they will fill in the blanks. Uh, they will help you making this, so it will, uh, it will make the process more, more easier, I think. And yeah, that's why my... I'll go. <laughs> um, yeah, I also find making sure that your communication channel with your engineers is super open and that you both make each other feel comfortable um, knowing that, like, like I would never want to shut down an engineer's idea and say, like, no, no, it wasn't in the design. Don't do it that way. So as a designer, I try to always be super open and perceptive to new ideas because I know I haven't thought of everything. And so I'll always um, sometimes, like, I want to make sure anyone on my team feels comfortable, like, trying a new thing out because maybe it's better than the thing I designed. So, um, and also making sure that if there's like something that, you know, it's just not gonna work out, like I don't wanna shut them down like m in a mean style. I wanna make sure like we, wor we work through why it's not going to work out and come together um, as a team to form a solution rather than me trying to lead every effort. Yeah, sure, it's a two-way communication. It's not like I designed this, you develop it, or the other way around. Uh, it's a lot about communication, so uh, I don't have a silver bullet, like a silver <laughs> solution to this. So it's all about communication and to find uh, the right communication channel along the process. Just two words. Uh, everyone is a designer. Uh, I, uh, you don't have to... The, the design not have to be the one person on the one team uh, for the company. Uh, design is everywhere, and um, yeah. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, You're gonna have to <laughs> walk here, <laughs> unless you... Um, I have a question on the... One of you mentioned taking a distance from the subject, uh, from the, the skill of the developers. That's really important, so I'd like to allow one of the, to whoever can elaborate on that. But the other thing is um, the developers are often also your users, your end users. So I'm wondering um, how much of is, how much, you, how useful it is to, to take less of a distance sometimes and take more of a distance. Like, in other words, is the source of what you want to accomplish uh, the best source, the developers who are developing the product. Yeah, so um, on that, um, it's kind of like a weird balance for sure. Um, sometimes I want to like lead the design more um, personally, but I don't have the technical background to do so. Um, in that case, that's when we when we have like a you know. Like just tomorrow, I'm going to have a big brainstorm around some front end monitoring tools, but all of the people on my development team will be there so that we can all talk about what like what metrics are going to be most helpful and where is the next natural path from here and like at what point is a stack trace useful, things like that. Um, but it's kind of on a, a per per project basis, so it's hard just to give like a general answer. So um, just to add to that, I think uh, the balance is always in understanding that like you can't make assumptions regardless of how much uh, you are the profile of the of who your users are, um, and try to 
trust your assumptions even a little less just because you know the product better than any average uh, user. Um, but it always, obviously, it always comes in handy because you understand the problems faster and it's it's a good thing uh, building and developing uh, for users who are like you. It's It can be all good things as long as you always like, let go of assumptions. You also had a question? Yeah. Hi, uh, it was said earlier, so as a dev tools maker, your biggest competition is the overconfidence of developers. The ones who say, yeah, I could build that myself. And uh, what are you, maybe three main advice to convince them to, uh, to get them to want to use your product rather than try it themselves or use open source or anything? Yeah, that one's a hard one. Also, I've worked at um, small companies where, you know, coming from a monitoring company, I have recommended to my teams, like, wouldn't it be better if we just installed somewhat like a professional software that does this for us? And that's um, been a shutdown idea. So that can be a really hard barrier to cross because um, sometimes when also the developers are very comfortable in their space and they're like going to dig their heels in it, I know this space best. And certainly they do. Um, so that's like the biggest hurdle is trying to find the like the sweet spot to get in where you're like um, providing immediate value that's one of the biggest things the biggest challenges for um, I think any monitoring tool is showing that like out of the box value and so that's something that every company struggles with still I think um, yeah so that's like the biggest thing to go for is that out of the box value to show like the instant you put this code in your or you know that you run our snippet we are going to show you all the metrics you've ever wanted and you will find immediate um, value, you'll find the bug right away. So it's not always the case, um, but that can be definitely the biggest challenge. Um, and, and also as a, as a designer or developer uh, of a tool, um, it's, it's also about like knowing that you, the, the quality of what you're making has to be like really up to the expectations, which usually they are pretty high. Um, and, and so with that and like offering so like support and kind of adding extra value to th the service, uh, it's also another way to kind of convince your users that they need you as opposed to build it their own because it also takes resources and like sometimes they could build it but it's not up to them to really decide because they're not the buyers and um, yeah. Anything else? Okay, well let's... Um, Let's uh, wrap it up and uh, thank you for coming and hopefully uh, we'll see you at the next Tech Lunch. Thanks. Okay.